Hey guys, welcome back to my OC lore series. In this video, I'm going to go in depth about Prue Crane, Car Thorn's best friend and human perspective character in my comic, The Verloren series. If you don't know what I'm talking about or are curious to learn more, I highly recommend checking the playlist of this series. There you will find my comics lore video as well as Car's video. Watching those in order will give the context so I don't end up repeating myself here. Without other way, let's just uh, get started then. <laughs> Prue was the second character I made almost neck and neck to Carr once I started really focusing on making OCs with backstory. This was during my MCU era, as I'm calling it, since Prue was a powerless superhero type character who worked with S.H.I.E.L.D. while, I, while she was also teaming up with Carr. The more I think about it, since Carr was heavily inspired by Harley Quinn, Prue might have been my brain's way of giving her her own Poison Ivy. Except despite her very obvious beauty and lack of superpowers, I made her asexual. <laughs> Over time, as Verloren started to form, I kept that aspect of her character of being an agent, in this case for Nas, which I will explain in more depth in Prue's POV, since this is where she ends up being the majority of her story. Her backstory goes like this. Her full name is Prudence Rosemary Crane. She grew up an only child with her family in Italy before moving to the USA as part of a transfer student program. She loved alternative fashion and was the kid who dyed her hair all crazy colors, truly living the emo fantasy I wish I had. She met Carr and her brother Mike in high school and have been tied together ever since. While Carr worked on vehicle engineering, she wanted to study criminal justice. It was her passion to help people in need. I didn't really plan on giving her like a tragic reason to study the things like that. Her personality is just that she's very good hearted if maybe not a bit naive. Mike shared that sentiment and brought up the idea of joining NOS, a protection agency that seemed to align with Prue's goals for her career. He spoke of a dream where he would want all of them to live in Jet City so they could work for NOS together. Ever since she was little, she dreamed of being an officer of the law or being part of an organization that helped people. She was a hard worker when it came to her schoolwork, very passionate and smart when it came to political science and forensics. Her dreams could be seen as good intentions, if not a bit blocked by rose-tinted glasses. She became very fascinated with NOS and studied the history of the organization the best she could, though she was only able to find the bare minimum of the stories that the company approved of on the internet. <laughs> she followed in Carr's footsteps to learn basic combat from Mike, and she had a fascination with swords, thanks to her being a massive weeb. Yes, I made this girl love anime. <laughs> Later into the story, this would be provided as her main weapon. Once she had graduated, she quickly went to college to study further in forensic science. With her talented smarts and passion for the field, she was spotted at a career fair by the creator of NOS, Samuel Simmons, seeing, quote, potential understanding for the company's goals. During the rough times in Carr's life, she was always there for her. Carr's medical condition is what fascinated her the most, and in some way, she felt the need to help cure her struggling appearance. Carr always refused, never wanting to be fixed, just understood. Prue was willing to give that. It especially came to that once Carr's family started to tragically die one by one. She ended up staying in Carr's childhood home with her and Mike just to make sure they would be okay. The news of Carr's cutting ties with Mike and then later joining Nas and tragically dying in, quote, line of duty, was what seemed to break her ever so slightly. Obviously, Mike was one of her closest friends, but seeing him die so suddenly for the company she wanted to join him in made her have second thoughts. She ended up waiting a couple years before deciding to give it a try once again with Carr's blessing, which surprised her. She was accepted with open arms. Mr. Simmons was very glad to have someone like her under his leadership. This new job meant new challenges and a massive paycheck which is what fueled her to move into Jet City with Carr so they could stick together or, well, more in solidarity of Mike. Carr agreed as it would secretly bring her closer to the underground party scene she would use to escape from reality. So now with all of that, I can go into Nas a bit more since Prue learns a lot about the system and its secrets very early on in the story. NOS has three branches of agencies that people work under, and they are led by hand-picked individuals. There's the medical branch, home to scientists providing new age medicine for hospitals in Jet City and soon around the world. 
Remember, these are the people who are responsible for Carr's side effects to her appearance. This is run under a woman named Angela Bennett. There's the resource branch, workers and researchers who create new resources for electric building and farming, etc. They send out workers to collect new forms of material to create the future of new wave tech. This is run by a man named Isaac Volz. And finally, we have the military branch, field agents who assist in stopping criminal activity, which is where Prue ends up and she starts out working under the branch's commander, Sergio Miranda. Sergio is the one you need to keep in mind because he will have his own video later. Prue started out as a very obvious rookie, as you can imagine, having to train all day to the point she couldn't really be in contact with Carr until a couple days out. She learned how to handle guns, even more intense combat, thanks to Sergio, and after a year in the field, she was able to prove herself among her fellow male co-workers. Her name became well known among the higher-ups, and Sergio would usually have her as his second when they went on field missions together which would involve dealing with terrorist groups and black market sellers. Seems pretty subpar when we are dealing with a story about monsters and cryptids, right? Right? Oh, I can't hold it back. I gotta, I gotta give y'all the twist. Oh, y'all wanted a twist, eh? After Prue proves herself to be a very genuine asset to Nas, having survived quite a few near-death experiences and impressing Sergio with her brains and brawn, Samuel Simmons invites her for a promotion. She is invited to dinner with Sergio and Mr. Simmons, and during that she is informed of not only will she be Sergio's new second-in-command, but she will also be given new jobs under a secret mission that she would need to sign several contracts for in order to keep her, her family, and anyone she knows safe or else she would risk national security. Under the pressure of having all of this new responsibility, along with the stupid amount of money she would earn by being a part of this, she signs everything and agrees to have the promotion. And with that, she's off to the races. To keep it simple, Prue is finally shown what Nas has been hiding under their secret mission. Sergio leads her to an underground lab full of strange objects. Unfamiliar objects. Mr. Simmons then shows her a full hologram of a map. A map that he says leads to a world beyond our understanding. It's for Lauren. Yeah, it's for Lauren. You probably saw that coming. But yeah, it's the world full of monsters. You know, the purple sky and everything and more. Yep, yep, it's for Lauren. <laughs> Prue watches in awe, completely shocked and horrified by the monsters and magic. But she knew she signed a contract, so she could not talk about this outside of her work. Not even to Carr. Her and Sergio end up in a very similar boat, scared, nervous, and cold, unable to comprehend the world that was shown in Mr. Simmons's vision. That was a tongue twister. She was told the true meaning of Nas, protecting the earth from this world and discovering what they can do with the supposed magic that fuels this world. And with that, we are done for now. <laughs> Trust me when I say it's only gonna get worse from here. Thank you all for watching. As said before, a lot of these stories are subject to change, so if you have any questions or feedback, I'd love to hear it. Thank you all. I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>